Looking at buying the TP-Link AXE75. Today, we've reviewed this Wi-Fi 6E router to see if it's any good based on its download and upload speeds, Wi-Fi range, value for money, and more. But before we begin, thanks to 3 for sponsoring this video. Their 5G hub deals offer a simple, cheap way to get online with very low monthly costs and fast download speeds from our testing. So click the link in the description to the 3 broadband coverage checker and put in your postcode here to see if you can get their 5G hub deals at your address at the moment. So the TP-Link Archer AXE75, or AX75 if you want to call it that, is one of the cheaper Wi-Fi 6 routers you can buy in the UK. You don't really see many cheaper Wi-Fi 6E routers on the market, except for used models. It comes with six Wi-Fi antennas, mounted externally out of the box, to help you get better Wi-Fi signal. As a cheaper router, the ports available are good, but do have some limitations. It comes with four LAN ports and an extra LAN port, which is a decent number to have, as well as a USB port on the side. But there's no phone port with this router, which can be a downside for some people. And with these Ethernet ports, they only support speeds up to 1 gigabit per second, which can be an issue if you have a lot of devices on the home network that you want to transfer files between, like if you have a NAS or something like that. And it means this router isn't a good choice if you have broadband speeds of more than a gigabit per second. Getting set up with the AXE75 is pretty easy. Just plug the included LAN cable into the blue LAN port on the router, then connect the other end into your fiber broadband port. We're using OpenReach, so the other end of the fiber cable just goes into our OpenReach ONT box. Then all you need to do is plug the router into power and press the power button on the back. The router will then begin to set itself up and the three Wi-Fi lights should turn green. But there's a bit more you have to do before you can get online, with most broadband providers at least. First, log into Wi-Fi using the login details printed on the base of the router. Then go through TP-Link's setup wizard, which we found to be pretty intuitive. The main thing you might struggle with here is setting up your PPPoE settings, which is basically a username and password that you have to put in as an OpenReach customer to connect your router to your ISP. These details are actually not individual to each customer, you can just find them online. So this process is pretty easy. Like other BT and EE customers, we just put in BT Home Hub at btbroadband.com with no password, and then we were able to move on through the setup wizard. At the end, it'll update firmware on the device, ensuring you're on the latest software with the latest security patches. The router will then take a few minutes to reboot, and you can begin getting online. TP-Link's software and admin settings are pretty good. There's a lot you can change in here, and the interface is pretty intuitive. You can do pretty basic stuff, like setting up a VPN on the router, or changing the DNS service you're using, as well as more advanced things, like setting up your Home Assistant device to control certain aspects of the router. There's not a lot in the way of visualization in this interface. For example, you can't monitor bandwidth usage in real time by all the devices on the network, like you can with some other routers. But for setting up and configuring the router, and tweaking things on a regular basis, this interface is really good. Remember, if you're looking at buying this Wi-Fi router, click the link in the description to its Amazon listing page to see what deals they're offering on it when you're watching this. To test the Wi-Fi and speed performance of the AXE75, we performed a range of different speed tests and used our signal checking app in a four bedroom, two story house on a phone that's Wi-Fi 6E compatible. This is a basic diagram showing the house here and the garden with the router installed by the front door and the different testing locations shown in blue. In the first location, we got a signal score of 90 out of 100 and almost the full speed on offer from our connection, which is 150 megabit down and 30 megabits up. If you want to test your Wi-Fi signal yourself, download our signal checker app for Android, which we've linked to in the description. So we got good results at close range, but when we moved further away from the router, we began to run into issues. This second test location here is a fair bit further away from the router, upstairs on a second story, and there we only got 60 megabits down, 20 megabits up, 
and a pretty low signal score of 20 out of 100. And at this location in the garden, where we normally still do see good signal with various different Wi-Fi 6 routers we've tested, though we could get consistent signal, like it wasn't dropping out or anything, our download speeds in particular were pretty poor. So from our testing, the Wi-Fi performance of this router, even though it has a lot of external antennas, isn't all that great. We got much better performance with the Asus RTBE58U, which costs about the same as TP-Link's router at the moment, and we've also done another review of it on the channel. We've also linked to this router on Amazon in the description if you want to check it out. As we touched on at the beginning of this video, the TP-Link Archer AXE75 is one of the cheapest Wi-Fi 6E routers on Amazon at the moment, but we still don't think it's great value for money, especially if they're charging this full price for it, compared to the sale price shown here. The Wi-Fi performance and speeds just weren't that great from our testing, at least without digging into the router's settings a lot and changing things around to try and optimize it, which might be a bit tricky if you're not really tech savvy and you can pick up decent Wi-Fi 7 routers for about the same price or cheaper than TP-Link's Wi-Fi 6E model. So at the moment, we think there are better routers on the market than the TP-Link AXE75. You can get better Wi-Fi signal than this, and better speeds over distance from other routers you can buy at a similar or lower price point, like this Asus Wi-Fi 7 model, which we've linked to in the description, and we've also linked to the AXE75 so you can see what it costs at the moment. And if you have any questions about choosing a Wi-Fi router to buy, or about the TP-Link AXE75, let us know in the comments, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can.